All right, welcome to Bringing It Back to the People. I'm Andrea Tupola, representative for District 43, the State House of Representatives, and I'm here with... Amua Amata. Who is also a congresswoman from American Samoa, just recently elected, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that she's been going through as a congresswoman and see how some of that ties into what we're doing here in Hawaii. Some of the things that we have in common is that we're both newly elected Samoan women. And so I want this to, um, Congresswoman to basically explain to us a little bit about her background and how she got into the, the Congress. So a few things that happened was that the person who held your seat prior to you had for 26 years. That's right. And so how hard was it for you to win this election? It was very difficult. What we did was we conducted a very grassroots campaign. And what that meant was that we took, took the campaign into every village, knocked on every door, climbed up and down mountains, got chased and bitten by dogs. <laughs> and, uh, but um, another interesting aspect of it was that there were actually nine candidates running. So in addition to the 13-termer incumbent, there was also on the ballot a two-term uh, governor, wow. plus six other candidates, and then myself. So it made it particularly tough. But um, God uh, blessed us on election day, and I um, fully intend to not disappoint the people. <laughs> of all the people who are running, how many of them are female? There were three females, including mm -hmm. myself. And yes. Coming from a society where you come from, where it's kind of male-dominated or, you know, leadership, how did the people take that and why do you think their preference was towards a female Samoan woman to represent them this time around? Well, when I uh, talked to my father about this many years ago, about wanting to run for public office, he looked at me and he said, well, it's going to be tough. It's going to take a very long time, probably 20 years. And as it turns out, that is how long it took for me to get in. You see, I first started running in 1994. Really? I've run every two years for Congress since then. After 10 tries, I was ready to hang it up, but uh, my supporters were just warming up, and uh, so we decided to give it another go around. And on the 11th try, we were victorious. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that kind of surprised me because I didn't know that that had happened trying 11 times. I think here in Hawaii, people try two, three times and then they stop. You know, they think maybe it's not their time. For me, it was the very first time I had ever run, but my um, predecessor had ha held the seat for eight years. And in Hawaii, once you get in one election, it's so hard to lose your seat because of name recognition, because of just everyone kind of wanting the same person, the same status quo of whatever is being offered. And, you know, in Samoa, they must have really wanted a change because 26 years of having the same person. So what is going on in American Samoa that you think kind of generated that desire for a change? Well, I, I do think that the young people are waking up. Uh, part of it is also the internet. And right now we are laying the fiber optic cable in the outer islands of Ofu, Senga, and Ta'u. And that means the communications will really explode. Uh, it was also the use of social media. Many, many Samoans uh, like Facebook and all of this. We don't have access to the kind of uh, campaign tools that uh, are available up here. As you know, we have one uh, weekly newspaper, in other words, one daily, and then one that comes out three times a week, and it's online only. We have one TV station that's owned by the government, so you cannot ever use it for uh, campaign. campaigns. Mm -hmm. And then there's radio, uh, which is fairly expensive. But um, what we did was we com we combined um, some stateside tactics uh, along with our cultural um, resources, and that's how we went ahead. And well, that's it. amazing! Congratulations! I think for me, I had the same experience as her, where. You just have to get really grassroots when you're trying to run for office. If you really want to leverage the people, you have to go out there and be with the people and talk to the people. And I'm glad that now they have some social media, but regardless of social media, the face-to-face the -face contact is really important because then people really know that, that you care about them. And so what is one of the things that you've pushed for since you've been elected? 
Well, uh, we uh, we need better help in the area of health, education, and then jobs. We have quite a, a few unemployed people, and that's the result of our cannery chicken of the sea uh, closing up shop in 2009, the day after a killer tsunami hit us. So all in one fell swoop, 3,000 people were out of work. So jobs are, are extremely important right now. But <clears throat> our basic needs are, are needs that are taken for granted here in Hawaii, as well as the rest of the states. These are things that uh, people have been getting up here for a long time. We're still struggling to improve our infrastructure, uh, try to uh, improve the disparity between uh, American Samoan students in education vis-a-vis -vis the ones in the States. So um, that is what we have been working very hard on. As far as my legislative agenda, these are just six little things that uh, uh, based on what I talked to at the grassroots level, uh, people said that this was important to them. And so we've already started to um, introduce legislation to that effect. And it's been real, really exciting. I, um, I'm a, I do not vote on the House floor, but that's not really important because uh, I'm a member of the House Republican Conference which, as you know, is a formal assembly of Republican members. And all of the major pieces of legislation that are going to reach the House floor get ironed out and, and discussed in the House Republican Conference. So we're just uh, just warming up. Good, good. I'm glad. Glad to hear that. In American Samoa, you guys also have a community college, as you spoke about education. So how is the um, American Samoa Community College going, and how are you looking to improve it for the people? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, our, we lost our Upward Bound uh, uh, program and little things like that help our youngsters, especially those who are, they could be the first person going to college in that particular family. So we, um, we have a four-year college in terms of you can get a bachelor's degree in education, but it's a two-year college for all other courses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so. And one of your things is also that you grew up here in Hawaii, am I right? Did you go to high school here? Uh, I did go, I didn't grow up here, but uh, I went to high school here at Sacred Hearts in Kaimuki. Oh! And uh, with a special arrangement, I was able to um, board at Sacred Hearts Convent in Luwano, and the nuns would drive me to Kaimuki at the morning. For all of so, you just tuning in, this is Congresswoman um, Aumata, um, Aumua Amata Raywagon, and she's just recently elected to Congress. But what I'm mentioning here is that for many of the Samoans, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, coming to high school here in Hawaii is is an opportunity that many of them take, and so she was able to attend Sacred Hearts. That's right. And so she does have some Hawaii connections. So coming here to Hawaii, since you did your high school years here, how do you see it different or the same as what you have to do in American Samoa? It was quite a, uh, an acculturation process for me, right. and um, but I uh, and, and I, I missed back home. Um, I never thought that I would really uh, go much beyond uh, education in the village there. And but my parents had uh, some other things in mind, and uh, they wanted me to broaden my horizons. So the first step was to come here to Sacred Hearts again. Very blessed. You know, I grew up with the Halleck family and they lived next to us in Hawaii and they went to Punahou. And I always thought that it was, uh, I guess, different because their parents still worked in um, Samoa and they were still running the tuna business and everything and their kids were just coming here for high school and then as soon as they finished, they back, went back to Samoa. But I see it as an opportunity, as you said, to broaden the horizon for the young people. And one of the things that she also did was that she appealed to the young people in this past election where she was successful. So what is the voter percentage out in Samoa? A lot of people get out and vote, not so many. It's actually fairly high. Uh, the last election, I would say the turnout was 85%, certainly a lot more than in the United States. <laughs> That's very high. Yes. And I don't know if you know the specific breakdown, but how many young people came out and vote? Were you guys able to do the spread of ages, or is it mostly 
you know, older folks that are voting. Quite a few of them were uh, uh, young people, uh, many of them voting for the first time. So the, part of our grassroots effort was we had to go reach out to them. There are young Tongans. Uh, when you are born in American Samoa, you are a U.S. national, whether you're Samoan or not. And we, did, we would go out into the villages and befriend them and bring them in to get them registered and, and so forth and so on. And it just kind of took off. I think the young people in American Samoa are looking for hope. Mm -hmm. They are looking for a, a better future than perhaps their parents are having. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting because here in Hawaii we are struggling trying to get people to get out and vote. And I'm not sure if it's the same in Samoa, but here I think that we really had a lack of leadership. Now when I say that, I don't mean that we don't have leaders. We have leaders all over the place, but people who can really inspire people and let them know that something will actually happen. When you vote, something might happen. I might listen to you. And I think that one of the pieces of legislation you just put forward might give people that hope. Can you explain to us about your bill about banking that might help the people in South Carolina? Well, it is uh, uh, checks that come in from off island are held by the bank for 21 days. And a lot of times when people are trying to make the finances fit, uh, that is a, that's a real hardship. So we're, uh, I hope to get that all done, pass the Senate and have the President sign it into law before too long. And we feel it as though our chances are quite good. It's exciting because even though it sounds like maybe it's something small, it's something that's going to affect every person in Samoa. That's right. And that's the kind of legislation that we need to pass is the ones that are going to help people in their everyday struggles. Exactly. Not in the struggles that are in five or ten years, but the struggles we have every day. One of the things she brought up is that it's almost like fixing a pothole. <laughs> For the people in Hawaii, some of the stuff that I'm doing doesn't take legislation to fix traffic or to help them with um, the commute home. And this is what people are looking for. They're looking for leaders that are going to help them get through their everyday struggles and know that their elected officials are listening to them. And that's something very important that both she and I agree on is that the people's voices need to be heard and that's why we went grassroots. That's why we would talk to the people because we wanted to hear what they had to say about how we could make our communities better. So Congresswoman, is there anything else you'd like to share with us as far as your new journey in the U.S. Congress? How has it felt? Oh, it, it, it is great. And, uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you. And I'm just very, very excited, and I see a great, bright future ahead for you. And uh, all the best. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in, bringing it back to the people. For all you Samoans out there, for Apatai Telelava, we'll be back, and hopefully, she and I will do more things together. Aloha.